Hey everybody and welcome back to Minecraft of Josh SDH and we're back on our world edit uh, server here or, or world and we're gonna have some fun we're gonna make a volcano uh, and the reason we're gonna do that is because in the process we're gonna show you how to use brushes okay so let's start off with brushes first uh, to make a brush uh, you need something equipped in your inventory that's not a block and so typically I'll use things like this is actually a wooden sword a stick or a bone and you're gonna basically tie a brush to that item and so when you do that, when you left click, nothing's going to happen, it'll dig out the block. But when you right click, it'll paint, quote unquote, with that brush. And there's a couple of different brushes in the game. We're going to do an example of uh, three of them. We're not really going to use the cylinder right now. But the brushes that we have are the sphere, the clipboard, and smooth. And so today we're really going to focus on the sphere, but in later tutorials we're going to talk about the clipboard a little bit more. So let's start with the sphere. So to make a brush, make sure you have your item selected that you're using. In this case, I'm using a wooden sword, and yes, I'm using a texture pack. It makes it look like a striped stick of sorts. And you're going to type slash slash brush, and then the type of brush you want. In this case, it's going to be a sphere. Additionally, you're going to need to type whatever type of item you want it to be made out of. And so well, let's start with our first one, and we'll make it out of uh, red wool. And then a radius. In this case, uh, it can be anything less uh, less than seven, so six down. We'll make it five. And so now we have a brush equipped. And so as I said, when you left click, nothing happens. Let me fly up here. When I right click, it makes a red wool sphere. Now you'll notice that it centered the sphere based on the block I was actually clicking on. So that's kind of important. Uh, if you want to, you know, start your sphere up in the air, you're going to want to do something like maybe place a block in the air wherever you're standing and then go from there. So I could do something like this. Um, and set this to glass. So now I have this glass cube floating in space here and now when I use my my brush it'll make a sphere floating in the air there so you could do things like that and you know you might macro the sphere you also might just set a sphere based on where you're standing so there's other ways to do that in the air where you don't need to use your points you could actually just type in sphere and I'll make a sphere now you'll notice I'm stuck in the sphere and sometimes that will happen and so what you want to do is a single slash and then unstuck and because I didn't have damage on, I didn't take any damage. But now I'm out of that sphere. So you can do things like that. But no, my brush, though, is more important. So now as I'm going around, I'm painting with these red wool spheres. And, you know, maybe you're making a design or something. Oop, got stuck again. That's why unstuck is a great command. But again, you want to make sure you have your damage off. Otherwise, you will uh, die. And so maybe make a giant red worm or something. And you can just keep painting with it and have a lot of fun. It will eat at your frame rate, so don't worry too, too much. There we go. And now, just for the heck of it, maybe I'll set it on fire just to let this burn while we're chatting about more brushes. So let's get a little uh, fire starter here. Actually, I'll just place a fire block. That should spread. That's one way to take care of sphere, uh, take care of wool. Just burn it out of the sky. And we'll burn these ones too. Why? Well, because I can. It's my game, darn it. If I want to burn things down and grief myself, I can. So while that's burning down the background, let's go over here. So a red wool sphere, probably not the most useful. Uh, one that is incredibly useful, though, is doing it with sand or gravel. I like sand because it's a little easier to see when you're working in grassy areas. So we're going to change our brush, brush's material. And there's a couple ways you can do that. You can create a brand new brush, so you could do slash slash brush, sphere, sand, and radius. Or you can just type slash slash mat and select your new material. Now make sure you have your brush selected, as you'll see that I do down there. So we're going to change it to sand. And so now it's set to sand. So when I right click, I make a sand sphere. Now why would a sand sphere be interesting? Because unlike here where you see that I have the red wool all floating up to the sky, sand spheres are going to follow gravity. And so when I put them, they're going to fall down and you might get some chunk areas, check errors until the, the graphics catch up. That's okay and that's normal. And so you can build a mountain with them and uh, eventually I'll actually get free. There we go. And you can, you know, have some fun kind of designing. And that's how I built a volcano. That's actually how we'll build a volcano in a little bit. 
Uh, so what you'll do, you know, if you wanted to build a volcano, we'll, we'll go ahead and start now. Uh, you're going to go around, and this is not going to be a pretty one. Uh, there's some really great examples of good-looking volcanoes out there. Uh, but you're going to go around, and you're going to drop your spheres, and you're going to get something that looks kind of like a volcano. Whoops, getting myself stuck again. And you come around here, do-do-do. And again, that's why turning damage off is so important. And there we go. So now we have this big kind of crater area where a volcano might be. And I'll just fill it in with some sand. Okay. So while the graphics catch up, we can see that we now have this area down here where we might fill with lava. Now this is our very ugly, very quick, very quick volcano. Okay, great. So we have this. <laughs> so that's the first part. We use our spheres to make it and to get a very quick and very rough looking mountain, um, which might eventually turn into whatever we're hoping it will be. So you can see though that it's very spherical still. You can see the sphere over here, you can see kind of over here the remnants of it. And so we're going to create a different brush now, and this one's called Smooth. Let me get rid of this fire just because it's annoying down there. So I make a new brush. I'm going to type in Brush, Smooth, and then a number of iterations. Uh, I find three works well. I don't really know what the max is. Uh, you can find out more on the wiki. But this is going to smooth at three by four blocks. And so when I right click now, you'll notice it starts smoothing things out. And so if I go around this mountain, and again, this is going to take a lot of time if you're a perfectionist and actually want to make it look, you know, real. Uh, you're going to go around and you're going to do things like this. Uh, I would also encourage you to, let me set the day back. I would also encourage you to get rid of those trees and, and fill in the base first and, you know, do a lot of things like that. But this is a quick tutorial. Uh, so you'll go around, you'll smooth out some of these edges, it'll start looking a little better. And you're going to lose height as a result of this, so keep that in mind. Uh, the height will disappear uh, when you're doing this. All right. So it looks a little less spherical, a little more realistic-ish. Again, I'm not trying anywhere near to make this look real. Uh, some sort of maybe like crater impact zone or, or volcano or, or whatnot. So now we have this wonderful mountain made out of sand. So when we try to change it, maybe we want another brush and we want to make this into rock. And so we're going to create a new brush. We're thinking, you know, I'll make a brush. Sphere. Stone. Five. And you're like, great, now i got a stone sphere brush brush. Oh, well that's not going to work because you don't want to add more spheres, you want to turn the sand into stone. So we can do that with something called masking. And to do that we type slash slash mask and what we're going to type next is the block we want to replace with our brush, in this case sand. Uh, so now when we paint will actually turn the sand into stone. Um, and we could do this as before like with a replace function, but this way you don't have to select things. You can actually just go around and replace. And so maybe you want to leave some of it sand, some of it stone, and you're really painting uh, on that, that material. And so to show you that, first let's get rid of the stone sphere, because we don't want that. And if you remember how to do that, it's just undo. There we go. And now we have this brush selected, and we're going to start painting. And you can see that the sand is starting to turn into stone, um, stone layers. And I'm not going all the way bottom because maybe I want it to look like, you know, kind of eroded, uh, the sand base eroded from this mountain. All right, so we're doing that, and it's looking good. All right, so we're painting this on. And again, that's because the mask is set to sand. If I came over to this area over here where it's grassy, you'll notice nothing changes. I'm clicking now, and nothing's happening. But if I click again, I'm going to turn that into actual stone. All right, well, maybe this is a tall mountain. Oh, look, the... Uh, wool's almost gone. So maybe it's a tall mountain and we want to put some like snow peaks on the top. There's a couple ways you can work with snow. Uh, in this case, actually, I'm not even going to work with snow. I'm going to work with ice because, you know, it's a very uh, perilous mountain. So we're going to change our brush material to ice. And we're going to change our mask now to stone. And what that basically says is we're going to paint ice on stone. And there we go. We can start painting some icy uh, peaks if we wanted to. And that looks awesome. Um, again, I, I recognize that it really doesn't look awesome. We're just pretending. That's okay. So there we go. We now have icy peaks on our really ugly stone mountain. And, you know, maybe I want to fill it in with some lava. I'm going to not use a, a filler. I'm just going to actually get up some lava blocks here. And just start dropping them in. You know, whoops. Don't set yourself on fire. Again, I have damage off, so I'm okay. And I'll just start filling this in with, with lava. And, you know, I would use the fill command. Uh, if you really want to do it, you would come stand here. And you type fill lava and a radius. 
There we go. And that's the quickest way to do it. And so now we have a nice little lava area that I just filled up. And we didn't, I don't think we went over the fill command, but the, there's a bunch of commands that you should be looking at. And you'll notice that the lava is obviously melting the ice and making a big block of obsidian. So again, this is an example. Don't really use ice. <laughs> um, but now we have a pseudo volcano and a very hideous one. But that's showing you how to use the sphere brush and the mask. Uh, there is some other thing, and the smooth brush. Uh, some of the other things you can do is you can actually create a brush. Let's do that with this one here. And you can paint on the multicolor wool. And so maybe we want to do something where we do, you know, two parts blue, two parts red, and three parts black. And so that's going to be our brush now. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot to actually make the brush. Way to go, Josh. So you want to make sphere two parts blue, two parts red, and then two parts black, and then the radius. And so now we have this, this wool brush. And the, remember, our mask right now is stone. So it's only going to paint on, oh. Now it should only paint on stone. There we go. I, I must have turned the mask off. Um, so there you go. So now I'm only painting on the stone, and I'm turning my stone into this multicolored wool. Again, useful? Probably not. Um, it could be useful if you're someone who's building giant like pixel art statues, and you want to kind of give a, a variety of shades. Maybe you want like a red, yellow, orange shirt, and so you might make the shirt initially out of stone because it's easy just to you know build some blocks out of stone, and then you can select that region and, or just paint that region with kind of the speckled look. Uh, really, that would be up to you, though, uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, but it does give you a nice little effect, and there you go. So now we have the world's ugliest, trashiest, grossest looking volcano, and we'll, uh, we'll fly somewhere else. Let's go actually back to our hut, see a real volcano. So we teleported back to our hut, and we can kind of, I'll show you the actual volcano we built um, a little bit ago uh, without you all here. There's my, my wood apple store. Hey! And I think the volcano, as the world's rendering again, was this way. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So this is one I spent a little more time on. So you can see it's still got some spheres here. I didn't smooth it out enough. But it does look more volcano-esque. And I have the lava flowing right into the water. Uh, this is a little more mountain-esque. And again, is it a great volcano? No. And I'm sure you all can do better, and I encourage you to. And if you do, please link, a, link it to this video so I can see your examples. But it was all done using brushes, replacing, and some smoothing. And, um, you know, I, I kind of like it. It's a nice little a touch. So that's brushes. Uh, again, there is a clipboard brush and a cylinder brush. Cylinder works just like you would think. It paints whatever you had for your cylinder. The clipboard brush we're going to talk about a little later when we talk about copying and pasting. For our next episode, we're going to go over advanced working of selections. So we're going to do things called stacking, uh, the clipboard, and possibly that clipboard brush. So until then, have a great time, keep building, and we'll see you later.